It is a perfect day for college football here in one of America's greatest sporting venues, the Horseshoe. Ohio Stadium in Columbus, the temperature in the high 50s, mostly sunny skies, and as usual, more than 100,000 fans have gathered to watch the ninth-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes play host to Wisconsin. The Badgers putting their perfect 5-0 record on the line today. Just moments before kickoff, one of the most spine-tingling traditions in college athletics, and it began 73 years ago today. The Ohio State Marching Band performing Script Ohio. This is only week three of Big Ten Conference play, but already only three undefeated teams remain in conference action. Wisconsin and Ohio State go head to head today, each 2-0 in the Big Ten, and Iowa puts its perfect record on the line tonight at home in prime time against Michigan. Hi everybody, Sean McDonough along with Matt Millen will be joined shortly by Holly Rowe. Delighted to have you with us. So Ohio State, number nine in the country at four and one, the only blemish against USC. Not a lot of headliners, unlike previous years here at Ohio State. They're playing good team football. They do have the one headliner in the quarterback, Terrell Pryor. Yeah, and they do. And Terrell Pryor has to carry this whole team because really right now this team is kind of in transition. They're waiting for somebody to, other, to emerge other than Terrell Pryor. But what they do have with Terrell Pryor is a dual threat. And he's a guy who can beat you with his legs, and he can also beat you with his arm. The main thing with Terrell Pryor, though, is he's just a great athlete. He's a great athlete, and again, like I said, he's learning the passing game. The ball's coming out better with more efficiency. But the bottom line with him, when he gets in trouble, Sean, he can really beat you with his feet. Ohio State playing great defense, number one in the Big Ten in defense, taking on the highest scoring team in the Big Ten so far this year. Wisconsin at 35 points per game, and as always, they have a terrific running attack. And it's led by a great offensive line. To me, this is the best offensive line in the Big Ten, and one of the best that I've watched in college football this year. And today it'll get a stiff test, because the Ohio State defense is a tough physical defense, but Wisconsin's going to counter it with a good running game, and that's going to learn a run right into the feet of John Clay, the big sophomore running back. He's a big physical guy, he's very patient, and he's a downhill guy. I think if you like good, tough physical football, you're going to love today's football game. It's Wisconsin and Ohio State, the opening kickoff right after this. It looks like college football and it feels like college football in Columbus today, a crisp autumn afternoon for the 75th meeting all time between the Badgers and Buckeyes. Ohio State with the edge. For many years, they dominated a 21 game win streak. In fact, Woody Hayes, when he was head coach at Ohio State, went 25 1 and 2 against Wisconsin. But recently, the rivalry has been more even. Let's send you down to the field and welcome in Holly Rowe. Hey guys, well as you talked about earlier, Matt, the key to this game may be the Wisconsin offensive line. We spoke with the Ohio State defensive linemen and they said no disrespect to USC, but we think this will be the best O-line we've faced all year. Now take a look at this. In pregame warm-up, the big defensive tackle, 6'6", Doug Worthington, and 6'6", defensive end Cameron Hayward were working together with their hands. As you guys know, one of the best ways to beat a good offensive line is not let them get their hands inside. These guys were getting pretty heated. The headphones went flying. And hey, they are doing everything they can to make sure that it's not the Wisconsin offensive line that decides this game today. Yeah, and Sean, when you take a look at this Wisconsin offensive line, like I said earlier, this is one of the best offensive lines that I've watched on tape. And this is a big group. It's young. You don't see any seniors in here. They're all underclassmen, but take a good look down here. It's a big bunch of beef, and they will get on you. They're very, very good at staying on you and just wearing you out. And John Clay, 
This runner is a big, powerful kid. This will be fun to see how the Ohio State defensive front manages it. Wisconsin coached by Brett Bielema in his fourth season. Got off to the great start, won 12 games in his first year. But then down to nine in the second year and seven a year ago, and people were starting to grumble that the program was heading in the wrong direction. The 5-0 start has quieted some of his critics. Ohio State won the toss, elected to receive. So Philip Welsh kicks off, and we are underway. Lamar Thomas. With outstanding speed. He's a former high school state sprint champion in the state of Maryland in the 55 and 100 meters. Lance Kendricks tackled him after return to the 23-yard line. So that's where the Buckeyes come out for the first time today on offense. Led by the sophomore, Terrell Pryor, out of Jeanette, Pennsylvania. Most highly touted recruit when he came out of Jeanette, PA. Was also an outstanding basketball player in high school. Scored more than 2,000 career points. Buckeyes are 13 and 2 with him at the helm as the starting quarterback. He comes out throwing, and it's an incomplete pass over the middle at the 31 yard line, intended for Dane Sansenbacher. You know, Sean, when you watch Terrell Pryor, you can see the development of him and where, and where he's going, where he's come from. You know, one of the things that is a great plus for him is his ability to take off and run. He's, he's a great athlete. But one of the negatives for him also is that he's a great athlete. He wants to develop as a quarterback and as a passer seeing the field. And sometimes his feet, which is a big plus, can be a negative because he relies on them. He takes off on a design run. And got back near the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Chris Marigos, senior captain. He's the free safety, made the stop out of Racine, Wisconsin. Another in a long line of former walk-ons who Late in their careers became a captain at the University of Wisconsin. Jim Leonard, Joe Panos, Luke Swan, among the others who've done that in recent years. Now this Wisconsin defense really doesn't have a real big name guy except for one guy. The Schofield kid, 50, that kid can rush the passer. He, he's the guy who, who brings the heat. And Brian Schofield leading the Big Ten in tackles for loss and sacks. Pryor throws with time. And it's close to a first down along the near sideline. Ray Small banged out of bounds by Niles Brinkley. That looks a little bit on the short side. And it is. And Jim Tressel will send the punt team out. He elected to receive the opening kickoff. Didn't get the kind of start he wanted from the Buckeye offense. Jim in his ninth season as head coach at Ohio State. Only John Cooper and Woody Hayes have won more games than Trestle's 87. Seven straight wins. The seven straight seasons of eight wins or more for Trestle. John Toma, the punter. Very high kick, and David Gilbreth, the fair catch at the 21. 47 yard punt. And here comes Wisconsin on offense, led by. Scott Tolzien, first-year starter as a junior. He was a question mark when the season began. Wanted in their fall camp. The opportunity to start. And he's done a terrific job leading the Big Ten in pass efficiency, completing just over 65% of his throws. Zach Brown starts at running back, but we'll see a lot of John Clay. Clay first to come in off the bench. Play action pass, and Tolzain is sacked. Back at the 15-yard line by Cameron Hayward. Well, Holly, what you just showed on the front end about working with your hands and working, that was all pass rush drills. And that's what Cameron, Cameron Hayward was, was working towards. You're going to watch him right down here. Get the hands off. Now, he just works to an edge. Is able to get and just just power. It's power on the top side, on uh, on the offensive guard there. To Moffitt, he just overpowered him to the top side. But again, all that stuff you said in the front end, it's it's paying off here. That's the third sack of the season allowed by that Wisconsin offensive line. Now they try to run it, and Zach Brown's belted down to the line of scrimmage. 
Ryan Roll, the middle linebacker, in on the play. Three sacks allowed, Matt. And this is game six of the season now for the Badgers. Only Iowa State has given up fewer sacks this year than that Wisconsin O-line, but they give up a sack on the very first play from scrimmage. Now, you and I talked about this, and we watch it on tape. This is a good offensive line. It's a young offensive line and big. It's a physical group. Third down and 16. Wisconsin 5-0, but by far their stiffest test of the season today against the Buckeyes in Columbus. A screen to Zach Brown. Von Torrance made the tackle at the 21. They got about six of the 16 they needed. So it'll be three and out for the Badgers as well. And the Ohio State defense really, they don't really have any, but the defensive line is a pretty good defensive line. Worthington gives you something, and Hayward's a good player down inside also. But it's really kind of both sides of the ball. They're kind of trying to define who they are. Brad Nortman on the punt, and just as the ball was snapped, flags fly and whistle sound. False start, number 44, offense. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. That's uh, Chris Borland, who's a heck of a special teams guy. But if you take a look at this uh, this formation for punts, uh, they called it the shield punt. They open everything up wide, and then they have three guys right back here, and they form the shield, and then they allow everybody else in the interior line to release right away and get down the field. Line drive punt by Brad Norton and a boomer. Caught on the run by Ray Small. Flags are down. And Small's down at the 50-yard line, but there's a flag back at the 30. <laughs> 61-yard punt. The return of 27, but that's likely to come back. Third year return, illegal block in the back. Number 19 of the receiving team. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Orion Johnson called for the blocking infraction. And there it is. No score just underway in Columbus. Aerial coverage of today's game is provided by Goodyear. New Goodyear Fuel Max tires help you get there on less gas. Each team's had the football once. Each went three and out in its first offensive possession of the day. Here come the Buckeyes for the second time from their own 19. Brandon Sane coming off a career high, 113 yards last week in their win at Indiana. Went ahead for about four. They're hoping to get Boom Heron back, who'd been their leading rusher earlier in the year. He did not play last week. Due to injury. Sean, we talked about this offense kind of being in transition. And one of the things you see if you look at the start of the season to where they are right now, they're, they're doing a little bit more out of the shotgun. They spread things out a little bit more. He's not under center as much as he had been. Out of the shotgun again. And he comes out firing to the far side. And it's an incomplete pass intended for Devere Posey. Of course, at wide receiver, Ohio State trying to replace Brian Robisky and Brian Hartline. And it's a very young and inexperienced receiver group. But they think Posey has the chance to emerge as a star. Yeah, he's he's got some big playing. And uh, and Chris Carter's son, actually, watching him at practice the other day, he's got some big playing. Deron Carter, he wears number nine, a freshman. Third down and six. And it's prior, he's going to keep it, has the first down and runs out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Chased out by Blake Sorensen, but it's the first first down of the ball game. Uh, just real simple. I mean, it's just an option. He's just coming down the line, but he's gaining ground. The one thing you'll notice about Terrell Pryor, you know, he's a real long strider. He's a big man. I mean, he's six foot five, six foot six, and a long strider. He's kind of deceptive when he runs because it doesn't really look like he's going that fast until he gets past you. They list him at 6'6", 235 pounds. Four receivers, and it's the handoff straight ahead to Brandon Sane. The junior tackled by Colmer St. Jean at the 41, a gain of six. Here's Holly. 
Many of these offensive linemen for Ohio State have been hit by the flu this week. Just about everybody missed some playing time and practice time this week, including tight end Jake Ballard. They will be without Andrew Miller, the backup left tackle. And guys, I asked Coach Tressel how it would affect their continuity before the game. He said, I just hope it doesn't. And that seems to be a problem in all of college football. Zane trying to run right, slipped down as he tried to turn the corner. And it's a loss of a couple back to the 39. Credit Mike Taylor with the tackle. You know, one of the one of the problems, you know, to, to piggyback on what Holly was saying, you get a guy back and he's still not all the way back. I mean, it just drains you. And then, of course, you know, the kid wants to play. And he, yeah, coach, I'm all right. And you get out there. And then, you know, in the middle of the second quarter, middle of the first quarter, there's just nothing left to the guy. So they do the right thing and they're, they're keeping him out. Of course, that speaks to the depth that they have. He must feel that he's healthier now. He's on the sideline. They kept him away from the team for a lot of the last week. A flag down and Pryor refusing to go down and finally succumbs back at the 29-yard line. Holding number 75, offense. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. That's Mike Adams, the left tackle. Who sat out the first couple of games of the season for that offensive line that's still a work in progress, and that's clearly a hold. Uh, it may have been more than a hold. It may have been like a takedown. It should have been two points right there. But O'Brien Schofield, the kid we talked about, he's this an excellent pass rusher, and he he's natural with his inside move. Very natural with it. And that's what beat him right there. John Toma again, another high punt, another fair catch signal. By Gilreath. Gilreath had some running room there as Buckeye was about six or seven yards from him when he made the catch at the 30. Still no score. Nearly midway through the first quarter here in Columbus. We're looking inside the American Whistle Corporation here in Columbus, the only manufacturer of metal whistles in the United States. They've been handcrafting those solid brass whistles since. 1956. So the officials need another whistle today. They don't have far to go to get one. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to win a couple of whistles. Wisconsin on offense in a scoreless game. John Clay onto the field and missed the second possession for the Badgers. He went ahead for two and was taken down by Todd Denlinger, who's getting the start today. In the middle of that defensive line, Dexter Larimore, ordinarily a starter, injured and not playing. Denlinger, we had a chance to talk to him yesterday. What a great kid. Real down to earth, real realistic, know that knows what he is, knows what he can do. And he's a good, you know, know what he does? He sets the point. He's one of those guys, you know, any kind of defensive front, you have to have one point first. That's what he does well. Senior from Troy, Ohio. Waited a long time to get regular playing time in his final year for the Buckeyes. Swing pass to Clay and Jamail Hines with safety, a good tackle in space. Held it to a three yard gain to the 35. It'll be third and five. This is Tolzien looking down the field and just letting things develop. And then, you know, Clay in the open field, that's, that's, a, that's a tough assignment. That's a good tackle. Nice and solid and short and sets up this 35. They've been sold on third down this year, better than 56%. Leading the Big Ten in third in the nation this year on third down, the Badgers. But Tolzien under duress, forced to throw it away. Thaddeus Gibson had the pressure. Gibson had pressure. They, they, they just flew through that offensive line. Looks like this defensive front for Ohio State came to play. Hayward had some pressure over there. Gibson came from the top side, forced him out of the pocket. It's two series and two good pressures by the defense in front of Ohio State. There's Brad Nortman for the second time. Picking with a slight breeze, blowing at about five miles per hour here to start the game. Another line drive kick, this one not as deep, and small, chopped down immediately. Good coverage by Antonio Finellis because there wasn't another Badger nearby. 43-yard punt. Tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC, Saturday Night Football features another Big Ten battle. Kirk Parents and the undefeated 12th-ranked Iowa Hawkeyes on to their best start since 1995. Hosts Tate Forcier and the Michigan Wolverines. 
ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Michigan's won six of the last seven in Iowa City. Van Heron is in at tailback. Pryor couldn't find a receiver and throws it away over the head of the fullback. Zach Boren, good coverage by Wisconsin. Good coverage down the field, Sean, like you said. He looked down the left sideline, was trying to go deep. That was taken away. And then he came back and looked underneath, and there was nothing there. And he just threw it away smartly. You're going to see they're going to try to go up on the left side with uh, Sanzenbacher, but coverage is perfect. And then he ends up looking down the backside, and there's, there's nothing there. Good coverage by Aaron Henry, sophomore from Immokalee, Florida. He was a teammate and good friend growing up of Brian Roll. And this came to college together. For a while, Brian Roll thought he was going to go to Wisconsin. At the last minute chose Ohio State to play against each other today. Boom Heron ahead for a couple to the 26-yard line. Heron's a guy they like. Heron's a guy who they want to get the ball in his hands, and they, of course they need him healthy. They feel he is he's back to where he should be right now. So we hopefully we'll see more and more of him if you're an Ohio State Buckeye fan. Sophomore from Warren, Ohio. First year in year one after Beanie Wells departed for the NFL. What a good tackle to stop that reception short of the first down. It was Aaron Henry again who took down Kabir Posey. That is a classic drive. That's an outstanding drive by Aaron Henry. You're going to watch him. He's going to sit in his zone. Now his eyes go back inside right away. He sees the ball thrown, and then it's a perfect drive to, the, to Posey. That, that's very well done by Henry. Ruled an incomplete pass, so it's fourth down and six. And John Toma will punt. For the third time already, they put a little heat on him. Short kick caught right along the sideline by David Gilreath. And the field position gradually getting better for Wisconsin. They'll start at the 40 after this timeout. There's the new place to get the latest of the teams you care about most in the Chicagoland area. It's ESPNChicago.com, whether it be the Bulls, the Blackhawks, Cubs, or White Sox, or any of the area's college teams. ESPNChicago.com is your home for local sports news, radio, highlights, and updates. Third possession for Wisconsin. They haven't had a first down yet. This is their best field position. Ohio State's had the ball three times and punted three times. They've had just one first down. They hand it to Gilreath, the wide receiver. And he has that elusive first down for Wisconsin. A good gain. They're going to mark him out of the Ohio State 45, 15 yards on the run. First down Badgers with six minutes to go in the quarter. Yeah, and just good speed. And then they just get to the edge. Nice job of faking inside. And once he gets to the edge, he uses his speed. Watch his little setup. Inside, back, outside. Interesting watching this uh, Wisconsin offense. You know, they are a running football team, but they like to come out and throw to kind of soften you up first before they body punch you. Two tight ends on the field now for the Badgers. Tolzien, a quick throw to the near side. It's Gilreath again. And a good open field tackle by Andre Amos, fifth-year senior. Seeing a lot of playing time in his final season for Ohio State after a career that's been derailed by injuries. Well done by Andre Amos. You know, a lot of college football, they like to throw these, these quick passes and get a blocker in front of them, usually with another receiver out of a two-receiver set. Amos read it perfectly. He came up and made the play. Scott Tolzien under center on second and six. In two tight ends. They'll play a lot of two tight end football and the flag down for an illegal procedure penalty before the snap. Prior to the snap, Prior to the snap, false start, number 89, offense. Five-yard penalty remains second out. Garrett Graham, the tight end. Senior from Brick, New Jersey. He's also their leading receiver for Coach Bielema this year. And he's also a very good player. And he's a good blocker, and they like him in the passing game. Doesn't run exceptionally well, but he knows how to get open. 
obviously you can see right there, they like to use him out of the tight end spot and move him around a lot because he's a good blocker. Tolzien with time and a receiver. First down inside the 35. Kyle Jefferson, junior from Cleveland, Ohio, out of Glenville High School with just his second catch of the year. 15-yard nice, game. Yeah, nice route. Just just sitting there against the zone. And you could see Chekwa, the corner, he just bails a little bit. And then he comes back, just knows where the sticks are. That's good awareness. And a nice job with Tolzien puts the ball right where it has to be. And the highest scoring offense in the Big Ten starting to find its rhythm. On possession number three, Tolzien throws it away. Hit as he threw it. And it's an interception for Kurt Coleman. Still in bounds. He's going to go all the way. Touchdown, Ohio State, 89 yards. He had time initially. He was looking in the middle of the field. Trying to find a receiver, getting on top of the linebackers, and the ball, as he started to throw, he got hit, and the ball took off on him. And Kurt Coleman, the senior captain, made it his second interception of the season. He sat out last week, suspended for that game against Indiana because of a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit in the previous ball game. And Aaron Petrie's on for the extra point for the Buckeyes. One of the keys for Wisconsin this year is in the turnover margin. They came in at plus five, leading the Big Ten with the first turnover this game committed by Scott Tolzien. And for Coleman, it's just a good job of staying in the middle of the field and reading the quarterback as he drops. He's going to get decent protection in here initially. Now you're going to watch this. He's going to try to find right here, the middle of the field. And now, just as he's ready to throw, he does get a hit, and the ball comes off high. And Coleman's there, just picks the thing up, and it's down the right side. It's a good job of Convoy. Watch, here comes the pressure right there, right at the end. And the ball comes off too high. Now, transition right here. You go from defense right to, to offense. Now, you have to just become a good blocking team, and that's what the defense does. Coleman down the right sideline for six. Okay, Doug Worthington and Austin Spittler, two other captains, were arriving to hit Tolzien just as he threw it. They have three permanent captains. They're all on defense. Holman, Spiller, and Worthington, they were all involved in that play. The number one defense in the Big Ten, one of the best of the country. It's been that way year in and year out here in Columbus. They did the first scoring of the game, the Buckeye defense. And Petrie kicks off. David Gilreath brought it out of the end zone. And almost broke a tackle. But they got him down at the 21-yard line. Here's Holly. Well, Kirk Coleman is sitting over on the bench, and he was getting up trying to give a shout-out to his defensive line because he knew that pressure helped him get that pick. So he was going, hey, 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 D. D-line, he was so winded, he could not get it out. He was trying to give him props. Uh, but, guys, he was trying to get his breath after that long run. Yeah, he was really calling for oxygen. He just couldn't pronounce it. And, Holly, both the guys you talked about on the front end working with their hands, one sack by Hayward, one pressure by Worthington. They need to Same. practice that more. That's their first charge. Timeout. Just as... Wisconsin was coming up over the ball, a timeout called by the Buckeyes. 3.42 to go in the first quarter, 7-0 Ohio State. Seven nothing Ohio State. They just used a timeout on defense. They only had 10 men on the field as Wisconsin was getting ready to snap it. Bielema talked about uh, one of the keys to the big improvement over a year ago, the turnover margin. Last year, Wisconsin was minus 10 in turnover margin. They had a mediocre 7 and 6 season. Came to Columbus today, plus 5 for the year, with a flawless 5 and 0 mark. 
Well, the turnover margin, Sean, like you talked, that's one of the biggest things in all of football. You get on the plus side of that, generally you're winning football games. You can cause turnovers and get turnovers. That's 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 good football, and that's that's what wins games for the for the most part. Zach Brown is the running back on second and seven. Good cutback as he had nothing going to the right. Managed to make it into a gain of two, tackled by Ross Holman. So far into this first quarter, just under three minutes left to play, we talked about that Wisconsin offensive line that up to this point through five games had been really dominant, Sean. I mean, it's the best that I watched on film all season. And right now, Ohio State's defensive front is taking it to them. Well, Wisconsin's 5-0, but there are questions about how good they are. Tolzien is smothered. Stayed on his feet. And he runs for a first down. He ducked underneath the hit and never did go down. <laughs> and managed to move it to the 34 and a first down for the Badgers. Whoa, right inside. You said that was a lookout block. <laughs> Worthington just beat him hard, fast to the inside, beats the guard, and that's like lookout. And then Tolzien has the presence. He keeps his feet and runs down for the first down. Gain of nine, John Clay, the running back. And again, they hand it off to a wide receiver coming around. It's Gilreath again. Nifty run. And out to the 48, he goes. 14 more for Wisconsin, moving briskly for the second possession in a row. Well, you saw this earlier, just in the last series, and they picked up a 15 yard, you know, 15 yards and a first down to come right back to him with Gilreath. And you can see Roll who was late getting in on the front side, ends up making that tackle. Rolls very active. Runs very well. Not a real big guy, but boy, he can get from sideline to sideline. Here's Brian Roll. Mentioned a high school buddy of Aaron Henry, the Wisconsin defensive back. Here's Gilreath again. He's a wide receiver, but he's been a frequent ball carrier today. And they're back in Ohio State territory at the 44-yard line. Yeah, well, you remember Coleman was asking for oxygen. I think Gilreath is doing the same thing right now. He's sucking some wind over there. His third carry for 36 yards. They're not doing anything to the interior of this Ohio State defensive line. So they're trying to get outside, Sean, and trying to spread them out a little bit, stretch them a little bit. And it's working. They have an excellent offensive coordinator in Paul Christ calling the plays. Up the middle, John Clay. And he has the first down near the 40-yard line. Plays a bruising running back, 248 pounds out of Racine, Wisconsin, heavily recruited by Ohio State. Jim Tress said, I thought we had a good shot at getting him, but then he came on an unofficial visit. They drove down from Racine. He got out of the car and looked like he was all crumpled up. He said, uh-oh, it might be too far from Racine to here. First and ten. They were ready for play that time. No game. Might be the last play of the quarter. One thing with Clay, he's a very patient runner. And he uses his offensive line very well. He lets them get in a position, so then he just comes off of them. But what you're seeing here right now through this first quarter is the down four of Ohio State are winning this battle. I mean, they are just they're just being more physical in the Wisconsin front. And that is the end of the first quarter. That's the end of the first quarter. I just said that, Mr. Referee. Kurt Coleman, the only score of the game on the interception return for the Buckeyes. Welcome back to the Horseshoe, Ohio Stadium in Columbus. The Buckeyes lead 7-0 after one quarter. An 89-yard interception return by safety Kurt Coleman, the only score of the game. The Buckeyes the lead, despite the fact that in that first quarter they had just one first down and 24 yards of offense. 
Wisconsin had 77 yards of offense, but the interception was the killer for Tolzien. He has Zach Brown behind him. And Zach gets the call. He's had some fumbling issues. Ross Holman tackled him after a pickup before we check out the Pacific Life game summary for the first time today. You mentioned the edge and yardage for Wisconsin. Yeah, you can look at the yards and all the numbers and really none of that really matters. What really matters right here is the defensive front, the down four of Ohio State. They are winning the battle against the, against a, a good offensive line in Wisconsin. Right now they're just they're taking it to them. Third down a long five, closer to six. Here comes a blitz, and Tolzien couldn't stay upright that time. Tried to dodge the hit, but stumbled back to the 42, and that's all. Chemdi Chekwa, the outstanding cornerback, came on a corner blitz and got him. Now they brought Holman, the inside backer, and Chekwa off the edge, and they did a good job of collapsing the left side. It's just numbers off the left side. You're going to watch it. Here goes inside. Here comes the backer. Here comes the corner. He's got to throw that ball quick. That ball has got to come out to Zach Brown on a hot fast, and he wasn't able to see it. There's Brad Nortman to punt for the third time. And he got too much of that one. It'll come back out to the 20. Tomorrow afternoon on ABC, the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues with the Pepsi 500 in California. For his win last week in Kansas, Tony Stewart has reemerged as a championship contender. He's now in fourth place, and he catched the current points leader, Mark Martin. It's the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Pepsi 500 in California tomorrow, 2.30 Eastern time on ABC. Mark Martin leads the chase. Jimmy Johnson second. Juan Pablo Montoya is third. I'm pulling for Mark Martin. He's been second a bunch of times, and he's he's first going into this thing. Got to come through with a win to win this thing. Never won the NASCAR championship, but Martin has finished second four times. And Heron carries for the Buckeyes out to the 24. For a pickup of four. I'm going over Jimmy Johnson. Uh, you know, I'm going to start predicting these races because, as you know, I play NASCAR very closely. Well, and touch. Jimmy Johnson has won there the last Injury. two seasons. Jimmy He's Johnson's make won a few Super Bowls, so I'm not pulling for him here in NASCAR. Dan Heron is injured. We mentioned earlier didn't play last week, nursing an ankle injury. And you wonder if he's aggravated that. It's been a touchdown score. Boom, Heron has scored at least one touchdown the last eight games in which he's played. Tough to score if you don't play. You know, they and they, they like this kid. They and they they depend on this kid. They want this kid. Obviously, they need him healthy. Mm. Yeah, it's just a big mess down there in the bottom. But Boom Heron's one of those guys. He's got a no, he's a good football player, but he's got a nose for the goal line. You mentioned the lack of headliners for Ohio State. They lost Beanie Wells to the first round of the NFL draft. Lost their top receiver. Here's Pryor again. It looked like a run. Then Wisconsin is ready for that. A loss back to the 20. It'll set up third down and 10. Mike Taylor. A red shirt freshman. He's been a big playmaker this year for the Badgers. Their leading tackler for the season coming into today's game. You know, you start talking about guys like Mike Taylor. You watch him number 53, and he he just has good feel. Some guys, it's interesting. Some linebackers, they just have an ability to find the football. You know, I, I look at Ohio State right here. The first guy who pops to my mind are two guys. Randy Gratisar was running. Chris Spielman was the same way. Mm -hmm. They could just find the ball. This kid Taylor, same thing. Well, guys honored our friend and colleague Chris Spielman here earlier this year. That pass is intercepted. Palmer St. Jean back to the 11-yard line. Ohio State took one back to the house, and St. Jean almost did it for Wisconsin. That was a nice, nice drop by St. Jean, and he's going to all he does is just undercut the tight end, and it doesn't look like Terrell Pryor ever saw him. He came from the inside out. You're going to see him Comer, right there, Comer St. Jean. And he's going to get his get his drop. Nice drop. He stays in field. Now, just watch the break. See, he was looking at the eyes of the quarterback, and it was just a nice break to the ball. Second career interception with a junior from Naples, Florida. First interception this season. The other one was last year against Penn State. So 
Now the Badgers looking for a tying score, and that's not a good start. John Clay dropped for a loss by the senior captain, Austin Spittler. Starter for the first time as a senior, had to wait a long time behind James Laurinaitis. Yeah, he's just coming off that side. You're going to watch him, number 38, right here. He's going to get around real tight. They're going to generally what you'll do is you won't block the end man and hope that he can't get there you try to take the fake with the quarterback to draw him it didn't do anything with Spittler he read it right away four yard loss Tolzien a design roll to the right and throws on the run caught at the eight yard line by Isaac Anderson junior from Minneapolis Minnesota with Chimdi check one coverage it's a smart play call Wisconsin, you can see them one only one of eight teams were perfect in the red zone. They scored every time they've been in the red zone. And Either and a touchdown or a field goal, but as you see, almost entirely touchdowns. 18 trips have ended in touchdowns. They're much improved in the red zone over a year ago. Another factor cited by Bielema for the 5 0 start. Let's see if they don't try to use Tolzien's feet here to buy some time because the pocket's been getting crushed when he's been dropped back. He lost a snap. And they got it back. But it's a loss of a couple on the play. These are all the things that Brett Beal and his team have not been doing through the first five games of the year. Well, he just pulled out too soon. And he, his eyes were down the field like it should be. But he just got out of there too soon and the ball, you know, on the ground. So Philip Welch from a tough angle will be a 26-yard field goal from the right hash mark. He missed his first three field goals this year. Has made the last five. A very good kicker. It's a fake. That's a great call. Chris Maragos, the holder, lunging for the pylon. Touchdown. And what a move he made near the three-yard line because he didn't even have the first down at that juncture and had to swerve to avoid a defender who would have stopped them not only short of the end zone but short of the first down well they they with the fake they draw and then a great job out here by Graham. look at that that's a great job getting a block right there garrett graham is the guy who made the play Maragos made the run is under further review what they'll have to determine sean is whether the ball hit the pylon before his foot went out of bounds and the crowd was booing they saw replays on the Replay boards here. Austin Spittler tried to make the tackle. Garrett Graham with the excellent block. Tough to tell from that angle. His foot's out of bounds. Now, if we run it back just a little bit there, his I don't know if his foot hit the hit, hit the uh, sideline, but right, right here, as he's coming down, you want to see if his foot. That's the first part they have yeah, to bet. I think his right foot's still in bounds, yeah, and the left see that foot's first. behind him, so he's still in. And then right there, does his foot come down there before the ball goes over? What a great effort, though. Maragos, that is a great effort. Knows he has to get the ball over. I think it's a touchdown. That looks himself. like six. That looks like six. What a, what a great effort. Man, I love that. Gutsy call, too, by Brett Bielema. It was fourth and seven at the nine-yard line. Would have been a fairly easy field goal for Welch, an excellent kicker. See the official right there on top of it to see the whole thing. He had a bird's eye view, and so it has to be indisputable here. Visual after evidence. Further re after further review, after further review, the ruling on the firm on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. The ruling on the firm can stand. Is can feel. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. And the folks who have made the trip down from Wisconsin. Enjoying that call both by the officials and by coach Bielema and now Marigos is their starting safety senior from Racine, Wisconsin will stay in the hole for Welsh. Maybe they have another thing <laughs> That one's up and good so Each team has had an interception They've both in big plays today speaking of big plays We've been counting down the top 30 moments of the last 30 years when we come back We'll reveal moment number 23 Buffalo Wild Wings presents the top 30 plays of the last 30 years.
Number 23, USC's number one ranking and 27 game winning streak was all on the line when they trailed Notre Dame by three with seven seconds remaining. That's when Matt Leiner tried a quarterback sneak from the one yard line and finally got in after a friendly push by teammate Reggie Bush, winning the game for the Trojans. Follow the top 30 countdown all season long. Brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Reggie Bush scored three touchdowns in that game, helped Leiter to score another. Reggie went on to win the Heisman Trophy at the end of the 2005 season. Be sure to tune in tonight to ABC Saturday Night Football at 8 Eastern Time. Michigan and Iowa tonight, they'll reveal moment number 22. I remember that game. That was a great game. And those games are Notre Dame and USC. It seems like they always have some classics, but that one in particular. And that was a great, that was a great heads-up play by Bush. Get him in the end zone. Caleb Welch kicks off. Bouncing down. They fake a reverse. And Sane still on his feet. That was just that was an exciting play there, like you said, Sean. Um, with USC and Notre Dame, but it's exciting here too. I mean, here's the touchdown. Everybody's fired up and Tolsey is just, hey, give me five. I'm looking for five. Anybody got five? It's a great play. And then he keeps on walking. It's like, <laughs> five, anybody? You got five? You got five for me? He finally gave up and then just started patting him on the helmet. Looked like Jim Valvano looking for someone to hug after <laughs> NC State won the college basketball national championship. Well, that's some good stuff. So the defense has scored for Ohio State. The special teams have scored for Wisconsin. 7-7 game. Early in the second quarter, Terrell Pryor threw another one up for grabs, and that one was almost picked off. The crowd's starting to get a little restless. Antonio Finellis stepped in front of Devere Posey and almost intercepted. Well, he was eyeballing Posey the whole way, and Finellis saw the same things. I mean, he sees it. Right, look, his eyes are back inside. Now he's just waiting for the ball. That's, that should have been a pick. And that's just uh, Posey, you know, he makes his break, but Fenless is watching the same thing. Nice drop in the zone, good patience, and then a break in the ball. Second and ten. And Brandon Sane is stuck back at the 20. For a loss, they'll give him forward progress to the 21. Here's Holly. Well, guys, Brent, uh, Heron, Dan Heron's been over here on the sideline getting his left ankle examined. He's complaining of pain just in the top arch of his foot just before it connects to the leg. They have taped him up, then they put tape over his shoe. I saw him over here walking on his tippy toes, making sure that everything felt okay. It looks like he's going to try to get back in this game and play. He came out of the game last year in Madison at Wisconsin due to a concussion. Pryor just one for seven passing on third down and long. Out to the 30, but he's still three yards short of the first down marker, and Mike Taylor stopped him from reaching yeah, the first uh, down yardage. Sean, he had time, and he was looking down the right sideline again for Posey. He keeps looking for the big play down the field. Looks to the center field, then he's going to the right, and then once he sees it open up, he tried to take off, but they were able to Taylor track him down, like you said. Still just the one first down for the Ohio State offense. They have 31 yards of offense to this point. And this is not a good punt by John Tomo. They got a great bounce. Picked up nearly 15 yards on the bounce and run. Lines up as a 48-yard kick. inside the easy living deli every time Bo Garrett and Mike Roy put pictures of food on the screen it gets oh, yeah. Matt Millen's attention <laughs> I've been serving Central Ohio for more than 20 years owned by a former Ohio State place kicker John Clay the running back Badgers football and they give it off to the wide receiver coming around again it's Isaac Anderson this time and he got ahead to the 25 yard loss to there. Yeah, and Hines did a nice job of keeping everything inside. Remember, now three plays, they've gotten outside. He's got big gains out of it. This time they do a nice job with Hines, the corner, and he keeps it back inside, forces it, doesn't, doesn't make the tackle, but makes the play. Scott Tolzien. His emergence, another reason why they're 5 0. 
Played in only three games last year. Didn't play at all in 07. On Tiger throwing across his body there. That was another dangerous throw. But a completion nonetheless to Isaac Anderson. 15 yards. Ross Holman made the tackle. Now you're watching. This is a good job of, of counter um, to counter the pass rush here what the Ohio State's been doing. They start rolling him out. He's tolling his leg a little bit and buy some time and he's able to find Anderson down the field. Zine averaging over 200 yards per game passing, 208. With the 243 in their win against Michigan State. On the run, it's John Clay to the 45-yard line. And we check in with Matt Weiner in New York. Thank you and hi, everybody. I'll be here all game long with headlines and highlights from the biggest stories of the day. Let's start with this Taco Bell update. A little bit of a slow start for Oklahoma against Baylor. This is Chris Brown for one yard and a touchdown. Sam Bradford tweaked his knee, has not missed any snaps yet. Sooners up 7 0. All right, Matt, thank you. Here's 7 7. Second down and four for Wisconsin. And John Clay got a hard earned two. He's still a yard and a half shy of the first down. Play went for 184 last week in their win at Minnesota. Now, Matt, we talk about how good is Wisconsin. That's their only road game so right. far. The game last week at Minnesota. Their four home games were against Northern Illinois, Fresno State, Wofford, and Michigan State. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, that's why I think they shouldn't even rank teams until after four games into the season. Wisconsin not ranked in the AP poll, number 25 in the coaches poll. Third down in the long yard, and it's Clay through the big hole. The offensive line did their job well that time. He went to the 44 of Ohio State, nine yards, first down. So what they do, they, they start attacking the edge. They go outside a few times, then they run off tackle a few times, but when push comes to shove and they have to get it, they just bang them straight ahead with power. I mentioned earlier with John Clay, he's a, he's a patient runner. He's not an overly fast guy, but he does a good job of letting his lineman get in, get in position, and then he, he makes the defender actually come to you. And he wears you down. He's done a lot of his damage this season in the second half. Last week at 159 yards in the second half. On first and 10, flags are down. Monty Ball, the ball carrier, tripping out of the state of Missouri. Now this guy, this guy's got some juice. And they're excited about him. They want to get him in there because he's a changer. Holding number 89, offense. Ten-yard penalty, repeat, first stop. And Jim Tressel welcomes that call against Garrett Graham. Big call, it wipes out the first down, the big gain, and brings the ball back to the Ohio State 48-yard line. Under five and a half to go till halftime, 7-7 seven, seven the score. Ohio State scored an interception return by Kurt Coleman, and Wisconsin scored on a fake field goal. Chris Merrill goes to Holder, ran it in. The throw a little bit too high for Nick Toon, their leading wide receiver this season, sophomore from Middleton, Wisconsin, and the son of the former Wisconsin great and New York Jet Al Toon. And it's, he's going to be a good one. He's got some good size, runs well, tracks the ball very well. And it's just a matter of time for him. You can see he's just a sophomore. But if he's anything like his old man, Al Toon, was, he was a player. Mm, that sure was, was a heck of a player. Second down and 14. And Tolzien got it off quickly, a bit too quickly for Toon, who was still coming out of his break when the ball sailed by. And when Al Toon was with the New York Jets, he was one of those big receivers who could run. And he did it in Wisconsin. And then he took his game to the New York Jets, and he did it in the National Football League. He did it for a long time. And ultimately what got him was uh, he started to get concussions and stuff. But Al Toon had big play in him uh, from the day he set foot at Wisconsin to the day he retired. 
He was all-time leading receiver, Wisconsin, with 131 catches when he left. He was a first-round pick of the Jets in 85. Tolzien is 6 out of 10 passing with the interception. Third and 14, they set up a screen. Blockers for Garrett Graham. And Brett Bielham is going to have a decision to make as Graham's down two yards short of the first down. Maybe even a yard and a half shy near the 35-yard line. And you're right, Sean. And the reason he's going to have a decision to make is because his defense has been stopping Ohio State's offense the whole day. And so what are you going to gain? If you kick it into the end zone like you did the last time, you're gaining 15 yards. They're going to go for it. Lean on that excellent offensive line and perhaps on the legs of John Clay. Eight-man front. And it's Clay bullying for the first down. He just ran over people. Kurt Coleman finally helped get him on the ground for the Buckeye defense. And this is the power you were talking about, Sean. And it's all generated down low. Now, watch. See, he just good vision and just finds that little crease, and then he just powers through. Lower your pad level. Well, he's even a little bit too high there, but you can see how he finishes it. That's just good power. John Settle, the running back coach for Wisconsin, compares Clay to Christian Okoye, the former outstanding Kansas City Chief running back. He's a so tough one to tackle, too. Yeah, I bet he was. Settle says the sky is the limit for John Clay. Running left, again, using that patience that Matt talked about. Such a virtue for Clay. 26-yard line where it ends. Clay's carried for 26 yards on this drive. Kurt Coleman, another tackle. And the Badgers, the very least, in field goal range now with three and a half to go in the first half in a 7-7 game. You know, to pick up what you said there with the patience, the runner's patience, that is one of those things that is so hard to teach. But when you have it, boy, it is a great asset. You allow things to happen in front of you, pick your spot, and then hit it. On second and five, Clay dropped for a loss by Austin Spittler. Spittler wasn't very patient, was he? No. Now he saw the same hole that, that Clay did, and he just took it. Took a nice shot at it right there. See, so just went back up inside. Graham took a step outside and, and just was out of balance. He hit him on the inside move. And a big, big down right there. Sets up third and eight. Also pushed them probably to the fringe of field goal range because Wisconsin is going into a bit of a breeze here. Third down and eight. Four-man rush and still pressure on Tolzien. Of Isaac Anderson, he's in trouble and taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Brian Roll made the big play for Ohio State. That's just good. That's just good team defense. I mean, that's just getting to the football. Nicely done by Ohio State. Excessive losses of three yards and four yards to make it a much longer field goal try now for Philip Welch. And Ohio State calls a timeout. It'll be about a 50-yard try for Brett Bielema's field goal kicker when we come back. Along the banks of the Olentangy, the horseshoe. Did the duck speak? I didn't hear the duck. I there it was. The duck. There it was, yeah. What's the oldest stadium in the Big Ten? That's today's Aflac trivia question. This one's been here a long time, and they renovated a few years ago. This one dates back to 1922. So the question is, is this the oldest, or is there one that dates back even prior to 1922? Philip Welsh will try a 50-yarder. He made a 57-yard field goal earlier this season against Fresno State. Plenty of leg into that one. And good. What a rocket that was. Good hit. Sophomore field goal kicker out of Fort Collins, Colorado, gives Wisconsin the lead for the first time today. It's 10 to 7. 153 to go in the first half here in Columbus. Now we're back in Columbus 
Wisconsin controlling the play. They've run more than twice as many plays as Ohio State. The Buckeyes just 31 yards of offense, better than a two to one edge, nearly three to one in the time of possession for the Badgers. Well, not for Kurt Coleman's interception return. The Buckeyes would be scoreless. Lamar Thomas. Oh, nice hit. And they fake the handoff. They ran that look on kickoff returns a number of times last week against Indiana. And there's your man Chris Borland again. Grew up not far from Columbus. There it is. Yeah, there's the ducky. It was a little hoarse the first time. The answer, <laughs> the oldest stadium in the Big Ten. Is it Ohio Stadium? No, Camp Randall, the home of the Badgers. 1917. See, two years before my dad was born. Our statistician, Marty Aronoff, worked the first game at Camp Randall Stadium. Oh, um, no, Marty said he was... <laughs> No, I can't tell you what Marty said. He's worked a game every day since. <laughs> Terrell Pryor ran out of running room. That's just improvisation there. And impressively so. As he goes all the way to the 39-yard line where Chris Maragos made the stop. It's a 27-yard run for Pryor. It almost doubles their total offense right there. He starts over to his left, and there's nothing there. And he just reverses field, and this is just... This is just using vision and athleticism. That's all it is. Both first downs have come on scrambles by Pryor. Pryor again. Now you talked about it earlier, Matt, the dilemma for Jim Tressel, sure. Jim Bowman, the offensive coordinator. They want to use this great skill that Pryor has to run, but sure. they don't want to get him hit regularly because he is a weapon. And Jim Tressel, compared to when they had Troy Smith. When yes. they had Troy Smith, 2006, 7, they were more of a spread team. When they had Beanie Wells the last couple of years, they went back to more of a, a conventional I formation, pro formation kind of attack. Brandon saying the running back. Pryor's throw is a little bit low. Is it a catch? Yes, say the officials for now at least. Jake Ballard has it. First down to the Wisconsin 49. Ballard goes down low to make this catch, and the ball is... He gets his fingers underneath it, and he controls it. You know, you know we, we talked, you can see right here. Oh, that, that don't look like a catch. Looks like a little bounce right there from that angle. Let's see if they don't Sorry, stop they play. stopped it to take a longer look at it. They did not, and now Pryor's a man open. Levere Posey inside the 30 and down at the 27. Antonio Finellis the tackle, 22 yards. First down, Buckeyes, only one timeout left with a minute two left in the half. And that was a well-conceived play. They tried to drag it back underneath and then brought Posey over the top. Right under center now, and he'll clock That's it. There's a flag. a flag thrown by the line judge on the near side of the field. Yeah. The receiver down here, Sean, was moving with his hands on his hip, kind of walking when the ball Illegal was snapped. Illegal shift. Two men moving on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, that was, looked like Deron Carter was out there and was not set. Actually had his hands on his hips and started walking to the sideline while they were shifting, and that's the illegal call. And to talk about what you and I were talking about the, with Coach Tressel the other day. You know, one of the things I said to Coach Tressel, I said, you know, it's your job to win football games, not really to develop an NFL quarterback. Right. Your job is to win. And what gives you the best chance to win? Sometimes it's this kid's legs. Pryor pulled the ball out after the fake. And an incomplete pass. Ron Carter looked like his dad, Chris Carter, as he stretched for that ball along the sideline. There was none better than Chris Carter when it came to those lunging catches and the toe tap inbounds. Oh, he had great, powerful hands. Strong hands, Chris Carter. And his son, it's one thing with his son. His son has nice, long arms. And what you notice with him at practice the other day, he gets in and out of it. You can tell his dad was working with him. Because mm -hmm. he gets in and out of his breaks really, really well. And this is, you know, everything's in front of here for, for Deron Carter. But he's, he's got it. Chris Carter is here today, former NFL All-Pro wide receiver and Buckeye great. Fire the pump fake, and that pass is incomplete. And looking for Deron Carter. Devin Smith in coverage. Fire's hot. Yeah, he wasn't happy about something, and probably the one thing he wasn't too happy about shouldn't be with his offensive line because he's getting pressure again. 
That's a second play in a row. That time, J.J. Watt comes off the right side. And in the play previous, he had some pressure from O'Brien Schofield. Same thing. Sets up this third and 15. And there, Kendrick Petrie has a strong leg as well. Fryer wants the touchdown. Throwing to the end zone, and it is caught! Touchdown to Bear Posey! Three times he's been looking down the right sideline for Posey, had to pull it down. This time he goes with it, and Posey does a nice job of, uh, in the air, turning in a, with good kinesthetic sense, actually. Oh, yeah, I said it. Kinesthetic sense comes back and makes that. It's all, not quite a back shoulder throw, but a great job in the air of body control. Gonna, well, nice catch. And they're going to review it, make sure it was a catch by Posey out of... LaSalle High School in Cincinnati that produced a lot of great athletes at LaSalle over the years. Look at that. Just turns in air and holds on to it the whole way. Yeah. Fenless there had, had good coverage right there. Look at this. That is very well done. Has control all the way through the catch. That's six. Kinesthetic. Yeah, I said it. Well, what does that mean? Exactly. Body part awareness. That's what that is. And if it didn't, it does now. I just made it up. All right. Can you take your <laughs> word for it? <laughs> After further review, the ruling in the field is confirmed. Touchdown. I think the Badger fans watching today are probably wondering why they didn't review that catch at midfield. They kept the Buckeye drive moving. Agreed. And that should come from upstairs inside of two minutes. Well, they all come from mm -hmm. upstairs. So the lead for Ohio State, they finally execute some sustained offense. And Posey, the touchdown reception, the third of his sophomore season. Aaron Petri adds the extra point. And the lead is four points for the Buckeyes with 40 seconds to go until the intermission. 88-yard drive. In just a minute and 13 seconds after they have totaled 31 yards of offense on their first five possessions. And in one drive, they almost triple their out offensive output. And it all starts on the front end to start this thing, get pressure up front, and the ball comes out, and Kurt Coleman with the big play. And again, nice job of defense in transition. You go from defense to offensive player, you convoy down the sideline, and you get six. And then there's the fake. Maragos does a good job. Graham with the tackle right there. And he gets the ball inside. And then we talked about it earlier, Sean. You had to get the ball to the big big play guy. And Posey's the guy with the big play. We'll go back to what you said. And you're 100% right. I believe that play should have been challenged because it could have been an incompletion. Looked like it for us. 32-yard touchdown pass. Well, has given Ohio State the lead, the short kickoff, fielded by Blake Sorensen, a linebacker out there on kickoff return. We checked in with Matt Weiner in New York. All right, Sean, Sports Center in game from Oxford, Mississippi, where Ole Miss is down 9 nothing. Corey Reamer blocked the punt for Alabama. They converted with a field goal, and the Crimson Tide are grinding it out, headed toward half done. And I'm sure, not sure I'd like the short kickoff here by the Buckeyes. We've seen the leg of Welch. They don't have the far to go, the Badgers, to get in the field goal range. You've got about 25 yards, 30 yards, and they can get something. Colzine throws. A little bit low and behind Garrett Graham. Remember the first down, first downs to stop the clock, allow them to get to the line of scrimmage and get off. Plus, you see Wisconsin up here, they've got their three timeouts right there. We asked the question, how good is Wisconsin? They played a pretty solid half. Tim Tressel still wondering how good his team is. Lost 28 seniors off that squad of a year ago. Three juniors went out early. Tolzine back over the middle. Isaac Anderson alertly runs out of bounds at the 47-yard line. 
And now they're very close to field goal range, and Jim Tressel might be questioning that short kickoff that he ordered up a moment ago. Yeah, I agree with you. You, know, you, you you're watching these teams, you look at these receivers, Posey for Ohio State and Anderson are like the same guy. You know, they, they got that, got a little bit of make you miss in there, and they got some big play in them. All three timeouts left for the Badgers. Four-man rush for Ohio State. Tolzien hit from behind and sacked back at the 49 by Thaddeus Gibson. And Brett Bielema will have to use one of those timeouts with 19 seconds left in the half. Uh, just a speed rush to the top side by Gibson. He's working on uh, working on Big Oglesby right here. See that kid right there, 67? And he opened the gate. What that means is he opened his hips right away. And Gibson... You're going to watch him kick, kick. Now he opens. See how he opens that? And once he's open, then his hips are even. It's over. And Gibson just runs him down from behind. ABC's Desperate Housewives is all new tomorrow night. It's everything you expect from Desperate Housewives. Lovers, liars, and alibis. An old fling comes back to tempt Gabby in what could be the hottest episode of the season. Terry Hatcher, Eva Longoria Parker, Felicity Huffman, Dana Delaney, Marsha Cross and that great cast. They're back. It's ABC's Desperate Housewives tomorrow night at 9. Gate Central. Oh, smokes. Sean. Not a Desperate Housewife there. <laughs> Desperate at lead. one point, he looked in the mirror and he said, hey, I look really good. Let's go. We're in need of a makeover there. <laughs> that we need. Look ABC. at all those Buckeyes hanging around his neck. That Buckeye man right there. See how the Badger men respond to second and 14. Again, a four-man rush, a quick throw, short gain to the 45-yard line. Should be calling a timeout right there. Yeah, they wasted, the Brett Bielema hesitated. They of wasted. the sack by Gibson was a big play. Well, now that's five seconds, six seconds right there. Yeah, they hesitated, and he who hesitates loses time. That's what happened to Brett Bielema. And of course, managing the clock, an important part of coaching. I did not know till we visited yesterday with Jim Tressel that he coaches a class, he teaches a class about coaching right. here at Ohio State. Meets at 7.30 in the morning, Mondays and Wednesdays. And who better to teach a class on coaching than Jim Tressel has been around it his whole life. Says it's a tough class. It's not come in and get an easy A. It's so hard, as a matter of fact. Only one football player is taking it. It's Thaddeus Gibson who had that big sack. How about the guys who he has helping him? How would you like for, for an extra guy to help you in your staff? Earl Bruce and John Cooper, yeah. former <laughs> Buckeye coaches, regularly speak to that class. It might be some of Tressel's students. Trying to get an A. Yeah, a little they brownies gonna work. there. With a little brownage. The brownies. rest. Big play here. And they had to do it quickly now. They let those extra seconds run off. It could really hurt. Quick catch. And it is a catch at the 40. This is right about the line of scrimmage from which That's Welch has the extent of his range because it would be a 57-yard field goal, and that matches his long if they try it from here on fourth down. And it looks like they will. Why not? The last one would have been good from 57. Yeah, Jim Tressel told us six or seven girls every year in that coaching class. They tend to do better than the boys. How about it? It's not easy. They have to go to practices. They have to do scouting reports. They have to go to high school games and write scouting reports and evaluate the coaching. It's I, think it, I think it's a great idea, and I think it's great for any kind of football fan. You go in there, you're getting taught by the best. You can ask all kinds of questions from, from you know, what's a three-point stance to understanding defensive leverage to coverage to you name it, they answer it. I think, I think any football fan should try to sign up for that. It speaks to the integrity of Jim Tressel. In a lot of places, the coach is teaching a class. So all the football players might take it and get a cushy A, but Jim says <laughs> the players don't want to take it because it's a hard course, <laughs> and it's at 7.30 in the morning. 57-yard field goal to match his long. It had the distance, but it's off to the right on the final play of the half. Our halftime score is Ohio State 14 and Wisconsin 10. Coming up, stay tuned for a complete halftime report right after these messages. Back 
at Ohio Stadium in Columbus. Getting ready for the start of the second half. Ohio State leads Wisconsin 14 to 10, despite the fact the Buckeyes had just 124 yards of offense in the first half, and 88 of those came on their last drive. We welcome you back to the Horseshoe. Sean McDonough with Matt Millen. Just a couple of big plays for Ohio State in the half. That was it. Yeah, that, that really was it. Terrell Pryor had the big run on a broken play, and then uh, and then he was able to find the big play down the right sideline uh, to Posey for the touchdown. But um, I think, to me, the big thing here has been Ohio State's play uh, of their defensive line. Remember at the start of the game, we talked about how Wisconsin had the big physical offensive line. It was one of the best lines we'd seen, and it was. And then, and then you come out here, and I think there's three reasons why. I think it's Hayward, Worthington, and Thaddeus Gibson. Those mm -hmm. three almost made it personal. And they've gotten after him pretty darn. They've been physical inside, and they've beaten all their one-on-one. -on -one. Every time they had a one-on-one, -on -one, they were able to beat it. So they've gotten pressure. And so they'll have to continue that here in the second half. And if they're going to stay out there, they're ahead, obviously, but to win this game. Ohio State will kick off to begin the second half. Wisconsin had more sustained offense in the first half. They had a key turnover. Aaron Petrie down to the goal line to David Gilry. And he barely made it to the 20. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Look at the three touchdowns in the first half. Got Tolzien, an interception, and Kirk Coleman, the outstanding safety, took it all the way. 89 yards. And Matt, this is a terrific play. The fake field goal and a short field goal try. And the effort right at the end, that is that doesn't get any better than that. Chris Maragos, the touchdown, and then late in the half, Terrell Pryor to Devere Posey to give the Bucks the lead by four. So Tolzien begins the second half under center. John Clay smashed ahead for a yard. And we check in with Holly Rowe. Well, I asked Ohio State's Jim Trestle about that short kickoff just to end the half. He said, well, obviously, we were hoping it bounced a lot further. Those were some scary moments. He said his offense finally found a flow. I asked him, how does he keep it going? He said, continue to complete passes. For Brett Bielema, he said he went for that fake field goal because it was something they saw on film. They repped it this week, and they went for it. And how do they win this game? He said, we have to control number two. They didn't get open until number two started running. If we, we stop him, we win. Number two, Terrell Pryor. Nick Toon makes the catch and gets knocked down short of the first down. They did a great job, Matt, controlling Pryor. He had 17 yards of offense total before the last drive, but we saw the importance on that last drive of Pryor. He had 60 yards passing, 33 yards running. Yeah, and, and the big play with the run when he was able to get down and reverse his field. And then the very next play after that, he'd able to buy some time and hit Posey across the middle. So it's still his feet that are working for him that are making the, uh, the difference. Third down and two. John Clay again patiently waiting for a seam, and he has the first down. Thaddeus Gibson, the tackle, and we check in with Matt Weiner in New York. All right, John, Sports Center right now. 2007 Heisman Trophy winner Tim Tebow has been medically cleared tonight for the Gators' visit number four LSU. Whether he does play will be a game-time decision by Urban Meyer and his coaching staff. Tebow, of course, was hurt two weeks ago, suffering a concussion at Kentucky. I would guess he'll play. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would think he would. The medical staff is putting their stamp on it. You better believe he better be 100%. And you know he wants to play. There's John Clay. Round right in. Late flags thrown just as the tackle is being executed by Brian Roll. That might have been about a 20-yard throw of the flag. That's a heck of an arm back there by the by that official. Holding number 89. Offense. 10 yard penalty, spot of the foul, repeat, first down. Yeah, Graham's had kind of a rough blocking day. <laughs> I, would say, I would say, or a good holding day, depending <laughs> on your point of view. <laughs> yeah, you can see right inside, just gets inside, and that, that's weak. Yeah. That's weak on Thaddeus Gibson, but I want you to watch this flag throw from the official. See it coming? That's easily, that's 10, that's a 25 yard throw. That's a good throw. 
They must have great eyes to see kind of a marginal hold like that from that far away. First and 16. And they're ready for that run from the wide receiver, Gilbrey. He hurt them three times with that in the first half. But sign of a well-coached team is adjustments, and they have a terrific defensive staff led by the coordinator, Jim Haycock. That kid right there is a big reason today why they are controlling the line of scrimmage, Sean. That's Cameron Hayward, Craig Hayward's son. Craig Hayward, of course, the great running back Ironhead, but that kid is playing physical. Everybody he lines up over, he's been whipping to them. Tolzien, and it is batted and intercepted. Great play by Jermail Hines inside the five and into the end zone. Flag down at about the 13-yard line. Great effort, though, Sean. One-handed. Well, the Buckeyes have already brought one back for a touchdown. Kurt Coleman, 89-yard interception return for the first score of the game. Will this one be wiped out by the penalty on the return? After the score, personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the offense. Number, number 51. On the defense. We'll put it. We'll put it on the kickoff. He's going to try to get back underneath it. You can see him nice eye on the quarterback. That's the key. And then the throw was underthrown, but Hines does a good job of going up and knocking that ball down and then able to follow it through. His effort was outstanding, and it gets there. Hines Jr. from Cleveland, a second interception of the year, so the defense has scored two touchdowns on returns of Tolzien interception. The Iowa State offense scored once. And now Aaron Petri will try to make it an 11 point game less than three minutes into the third quarter. Petri's had a hard time this year with the uprights. Three times he's missed kicks, either field goals or extra points, because he hit an upright. No problem there. Jamel Hines. The catch and the return, officially 32 yards on the run back. 21-10 Ohio State. Aerial coverage of today's game is presided, uh, provided by Goodyear. New Goodyear Fuel Max tires help you get there on less gas. And what a beautiful day it is to be looking down from the Goodyear blimp. Not such a wonderful day for Scott Tolzien. We mentioned they were plus five for the year in turnover margin. And Tolzien had been playing largely mistake-free football. Not today. He's thrown two picks. They've been run back. Has the personal foul penalty on the score. They had to kick off from the 15. This is Maurice Moore taking Petrie's kickoff. To the 31-yard line. And let's take a look at today's city inside view. Well, if you're a defender and you're sitting in the zone, what you want to really concentrate on is after your zone drops at the quarterback side. Now, he comes off the middle of the field right away, and his eyes are downfield the whole way. He's looking and telegraphing this throw completely. And that's what Jamel sees on the backside right there. See that? That is well done. He called the eyes the whole time. Jamel Hines just follows it, gets him to the ball, knocks it down, and makes a big play. Been the most efficient quarterback in the Big Ten entering today's game. Comes out down the field and has a man open. Nick Toon in the Buckeye territory and wrestled down by Kurt Coleman at the 36. 33 yards, first down, Wisconsin. That's a nice job by Toon. It's a, you're going to watch him. He's going to go inside out. Well done. Get back outside. They vacate that quadrant, they just run it off, and then Toon's able to take it. Tolzien has time enough to see it, makes a throw. Zach Brown, the running back. Again, two tight ends for Wisconsin. Brown 
inside the 35, and that's it. The hard-earned yard. He got popped by Ross Pullman. Now, if you are a Wisconsin Badger, what happens to your game plan here? Right now, there's a lot of time, and you're driving the ball, and so I think what it does, it doesn't really alter very much at all. You stay with what you do well, and that's running the football, and now what they've done is they've moved the pocket a little bit because of what we talked about earlier with the defensive line, they've been getting after this offensive line. This Not offensive much line and Tolzien dealing with a much stronger foe than they've seen so far this year. This Ohio State defense. Tolzien again under pressure and it's dropped. The throw was a little bit behind Isaac Anderson. But he knows he should have hauled that one in near the 20. They got pressure right at the end of Tolzien. And he makes that throw. Now it's behind him, but Sean, you are 100% right. Anderson has got to make that. He's got to make that catch. You're a big play guy, and you're at this level of play. Those catches, they got to be made. We mentioned Al Toon's son is in this game. Chris Carter's son is in this game. And Anderson's dad, Melvin, was a fine wide receiver at the University of Minnesota, played in the NFL, Kansas City, and Pittsburgh. Third down nine. They bring a late blitz. It was picked up nicely by Zach Brown. Tolzien's across the line. And he's short of the first down by three yards at the 29. Ducked under a hit from Ross Holman and Brian Roll. And here comes the field goal team. It would make it an eight-point game, a one-score game for Brett Bielema. But it's another long field goal. Ball's going to be spotted at the 36, a 46-yard try for Welch, who connected from 50 and missed one just before the half from 57. It's been an eventful first five minutes of this third quarter. Each team has scored. And it's an eight-point game. The Buckeyes with the lead here in Columbus. They almost can't have a building big enough to house all the legends of Ohio State. None bigger than Woody Hayes. Wayne Woodrow, Woody Hayes, 28 years. As head coach, 13 Big Ten titles. You mentioned dominated Wisconsin 25 1 and 2 was his record against the Badgers. Philip Welch the kickoff. Here's Ray Small right up the hash marks. Through a big hole. He's going to go. And there are no flags on the field. 96 yards. He just took it right up the middle. Looked like it was a middle return. Everybody was blocked, and then he just one where they're not. His first career kickoff return for a touchdown. He has returned a punt for a score. So the defense has scored two touchdowns. Now the special teams a touchdown for Ohio State. Offense doesn't have a chance to get on the field right now, and they don't care. Aaron Petri, the extra point. And it's 28 to 13. Buckeyes, we still haven't played five minutes here in the third quarter. Like I said, it's going to be a middle return. Nice block there, and then just, it's open. Look, it just follow your eyes. There's nothing there. They're getting the double right here. Just beat the kicker. He's off to the races. That's 21 points outside the offense. One on special teams, two on defense. But this is just big play, big play speed, and he knows it. Oh, yeah, you're a Wisconsin fan. That says it all right there. So I know you've got to be kidding me. Well, the Wisconsin offense has been better than the Ohio State offense today, but too many problems in other areas for the Badgers. 
Well, we've seen it on every level of football. Do not beat yourself. And Maurice Moore That's answered. a mistake. Off to a rough start, and he is down at the six-yard line. Anderson Russell leading the brigade for Ohio State. Uh, there was poor communication there, Sean. You're going to watch right down here. You're going to see that's Borland. He's telling him to stay in. It's too late. He's already out. Once his foot is in the field, he's got to come. He either didn't see Borland fast enough or Borland wasn't yelling loud enough or whatever it was, it didn't happen, and he took the step out of, out of the end zone. Now you got to bring it. And for some reason, the game clock hasn't been moving since the field goal. Didn't move on the kickoff return by either team. By Small or by Moore, it's been stuck on 10:06. Tolzien out of the end zone, hot. Now to the 12-yard line goes Lance Kendricks. Ross Holman the stop. Here's Holly. Well, guys, Wisconsin's head coach Brett Bielema also coaches special teams. So when his player just came to the sideline after making that mental mistake, stepping out of the end zone, he repeated about seven straight times: "Use your eyes, use your eyes, use your eyes." Can't rely on what your teammates telling you. You got to use your eyes. Well, he didn't use his eyes, and he lost control of where he was on the field. That just that got him. I don't think anyone would hesitate if they look at their teammate giving the stop sign. <laughs> John Clay, rugged run to the 21, eight yards. First down, Kurt Coleman, the tackle. We mentioned Clay's the kind of back who can wear down the defense in the second half. Down by 15. Still a lot of time left. They have time to use that weapon, John Clay. And two scores. Now the officials. Yeah. I wonder, Sean, if they're not going to talk about what you said earlier about the clock not moving because the official time is kept down on the field. Yeah, there were a couple of instances. The Welsh field goal to the small kickoff return and then the Moore kickoff return where the clock never moved. As you look at, at John Clay and like you've said a few times about his good patience. And if they're going to if they're going to be anything, they got to get back in this game. It's a two-score game. For the press box. I missed that. But this offensive line is going to have to be what we saw on film. Apparently the issue is a clock malfunction. They're letting the game clock run down now. They're letting it go for a long time. <laughs> now the only two plays that I think the clock didn't move were on the two kickoff returns. That would be an awful long time, two kickoff returns. Amount of time they just took off the clock, and they're going to revisit this issue again at the sideline. Well, keep in mind, like we said earlier, that the official clock is kept down on the field. But if you're a player on the field, you can't say, "Hey, hey, ref, how much time left? Where are we?" You know, you, obviously you're looking up at the big scoreboard. So you need to get that thing straightened out. Small a minute to run that kickoff back. There's a guy, Doug Worthington, right there, who's played one whale of a football game today. He's been he's been physical on the inside. He's gotten pressure. He's been big in the run game. He, along with Cameron Hayward, Thaddeus Gibson on the outside, Spitler, the linebacker. Those guys have roll. All, all those guys, they've, they've, they've played good defense up front. Here's the announcement again. 8.40 is the accurate time on the clock. Well, there's no doubt. You mentioned the lack of headliners on either side of the ball for Ohio State. In contrast to so many years and not only the recent past, but the distant past as well. But the coaches talk about 
they like the team. They're playing good team football. They play well together. There's a great attitude and chemistry. I think there's no doubt they have a typical Ohio State defense here after watching this and the way they played against USC. But you wonder about the offense. They lost a lot of big playmakers, Beanie Well, some wide receivers after last year. And as Jim Trestle said yesterday, for Terrell Pryor, it's been two different worlds. Last year he got thrown in, but he had a talented cast of playmakers around him with Robisky and Hartline and Beanie Wells. Now he's the established starter, but he doesn't have the experienced, talented weapons around him. He has guys who are going to get better, but their work's in progress right now. Well, with great talent comes great expectations. And so they'll continue to lean on. They took a lot of time off the clock. And they wind it as Tolzien comes out throwing. And no gain on the play. Mickey Turner flattened immediately by Ross Pullman. And one of the things that Tolzien is going to have to do a better job of is seeing the whole field. Because right now it just looks like he is eyeballing one guy. And when you're a defender, and you're sitting in zone, not necessarily man because you're locked on a man, but when you're sitting in zone, with Ohio State's playing a lot of, his eyes will take you right to the football. A high percentage again today of completions, but two of them the wrong team. And that pass is incomplete in the direction of Garrett Graham. And we talked about how good is Wisconsin 5 and 0 but against the soft schedule although Fred Bielham pointed out four of the five teams they played were bowl eligible last year. But Jim Tressel has the same question sure. the big opponent they played they were defeated by USC and that much anticipated game here but their wins were against Navy to start the year that was a dog fight here they beat Toledo Illinois and Indiana so they're still trying to figure out just how good they are. I think college football right now is muddled from top to bottom, to be perfectly frank. Third down and ten. Tolzien zings one for a first down. And he did a good job there because they had defenders pulling at Tolzien's arm. He ripped the ball down and then fired a strike to Gilreath. 19 yards. It was Nathan Williams who was putting a little pressure on Tolzien. Well, that is a good job by Tolzien and good strength and confidence to stand in the pocket. You know, he sees Gilreath coming. He's tracking him right there. And he stay, gets right back on it. That's, that's well done. On first and ten, John Clay. To the 45, Chimdi Chekwab from the corner to make the tackle. Ryan Roll also in on the stop. We talked about how Roll went to high school with Aaron Henry down in Immokalee, Florida. They almost both went to Wisconsin. Roll decided the last minute to come to Ohio State. Roll was very candid talking about a great influence Aaron Henry has been in his life as a youngster. Roll was in and out of trouble. One of seven children, poor family. He was on crowd, went to an alternative school for a while to try to get his life back on track. They said it was Aaron Henry's example, particularly his faith, that helped set his life right. Monty Ball carries for the first down. Monty got it to the 46-yard line. That's pretty impressive when somebody who's a junior high person, high school age young man, can still be the role model for you to follow to get your life on track. Yeah, and it, it speaks of character, but it also speaks of good parenting. Mm -hmm. That's what it speaks of. And Aaron Henry, Aaron Henry's a that's a class kid. Their coach is here today. John Weber, no longer the head coach, came here to see his former players. Nearing six minutes left, third quarter. It's the freshman ball again. And he's down to the 42-yard line. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, guys, we're seeing more of Monty Ball right now running back for Wisconsin because Zach Brown, the number two guy, is over on the sideline being examined for what I'm told is some type of head injury. They are examining him for a possible concussion. He's sitting on the bench. It does not look like his return is imminent. But keep in mind, they've been working in Monty Ball last week. He had four carries. This is a kid they like. We'll see more of him if Ball and uh, Clay. Ball well, from Missouri rushed for over 8,200 yards in high school. Tolzien, one of the few times today, a lot of time, and he finds ball out of the backfield. First down, they're moving nicely. They're at the 32-yard line of Ohio State. And now you're starting to see that offensive line kind of take control here in the second half. Whatever adjustments they made at halftime, 
whether it's just to man up or, or whether it's, you know, your slide protections or your base, whatever it is, they're doing a good job back inside and giving them time. Ten-yard gain. Peter Kahn's the freshman. He's been impressive as a red shirt, stepping in at center this year. On first and ten. John Clay bowling his way inside the 25. There is a flag down. He's out on the fringe coming from the outside. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield on the offense. Five-yard penalty will repeat first down. Wasn't very happy with that. Yeah, they, what has to happen, you know, if you have two receivers to one side, it depends who's eligible on the inside. If it's a tight end, then both have to be off. But if it isn't, then that guy's got to be on the line of scrimmage, and that's what, that's what Coach is yelling at him about. It's too late now. That flag's down. Doesn't matter what the explanation is. That's a big call. Makes it first down and 15 at the 37. Again, Tolzien giving a nice pocket, going for the end zone, and it is incomplete. Looked like he had Isaac Anderson, who could not make the catch. Andre Amos with coverage and help coming from Kurt Coleman. Well, Anderson had the right position, got to the inside, and that you cannot drop that ball. That's that's the second one of the day. That's got that's six. That's right there. That's a good throw. Everything was exactly the way it was supposed to be, but Anderson's got to make that play. He knows it. He's had a couple big drops today. A frustrating day so far for the Badgers. Here's Clay. Had some running room, but that closed up quickly. It's Anderson Russell. He it said it. Terrific performer last week. He was their defensive standout of the game at safety for Ohio State. Especially in light of the fact that Coleman couldn't play. They needed a big effort and got it last week from Anderson Russell. Yeah, well, he did very, very well there. Like you said, he closed the very Get off the blocks. It's one thing to be blocked. That's fine. But get off the block as quick as you can. And Russell did it. Just a fantastic job right there. and sets up this third down. Looks like pressure. Yeah, they come on a blitz. Tolzien has time, has a receiver for a first down. It's David Gilry hanging on at the 20. Give that offensive line credit. They're doing a better job now against this defensive front of Ohio State. 16-yard yeah. game. And a good job also by the running back. The good job to get back inside. They were going to make sure the interior wasn't going to break down. He comes across as nice time and then just view the field. Gilry inside, sits down, first down. Wisconsin on the move, down by 15. Olzine again with time, and the pass is batted down by Doug Worthington, senior captain. You know, Matt, because of the interception return for a touchdown, the kickoff return for a touchdown, the Ohio State offense has not run a play from scrimmage here in the third quarter. They're three away left. They better start warming up again because they are going to be stiff. It, I, I'll tell you, what is going to be stiff is going to be the Ohio State defense. They've been out there, obviously, the whole time. Well, the defense and special teams scoring today. No reason to run the offense out there. <laughs> offense has just one of the four Ohio State touchdowns. Play into the boundary and down at the 17-yard line. Under three minutes to go in the third quarter. Brian Roll made the tackle. Well, if you're a Wisconsin fan, you got to get six out of this drive. They've moved the ball consistently. They've run the ball well. They've protected well. And they've been big on third down. And here comes another one. They've got to get it right here. This is a big play for the Wisconsin Badgers if they're going to get back in this game. This is the way with Wisconsin. They've chewed up the clock. 15th play of the drive. Two and a half minutes left in the quarter. Third down and eight. Just a four-man rush. He goes to the check down. It's juggled and caught by John Clay, but for no gain. Von Torrance right there, the cornerback, 
for Ohio State. And now Brett Bielema is going to send the field goal unit on with 17 minutes to go. He'll be content to be down by 12. He had Nick Toon inside. Had he been able to just hang on a little bit more, he had Nick Toon coming open on the inside. So now Welch trying a 33-yarder. And it is no good. They had the ball for over seven minutes and come away with nothing. That is a gigantic kick in the stomach. Got to come away with points, at least three. Here they come away with nothing because he pushes them. Tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC, Saturday Night Football features another Big Ten battle. It's the undefeated 12th ranked Iowa Hawkeyes taking on Tor Tate Forcier and the Michigan Wolverines. ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines tonight at 8 5 Pacific. Sean, you and I watched Tate Forcier earlier in the season and is in his first start, I mean, the second start. But I'll tell you one thing about that. He's not there yet, but that kid. No, no game is too big for him. It was the first offensive snap for Ohio State of this quarter. They've run one offensive play, and that goes for a loss, but they've scored 14 points in this quarter. Wisconsin's had 29 offensive snaps in this quarter and has scored three points. That just kills him. Snaps are 29 to 1 in favor of Wisconsin. The points are 14 to 3 in favor of Ohio <laughs> I'll State. I'll take the points. Yes. <laughs> Brandon Sane out to the 26, and we check in with Matt Weiner in New York. All right, Sean, check this out. Oregon has a couple of touchdown lead at UCLA, but look at the play by Akeem Ayers right there to intercept Nate Costa, and in tight quarters, somehow collect it and get his foot down for the touchdown. The Ducks continue to lead at Pasadena 24-10. They rallied beautifully from that ugly opening loss at Boise State. Down a half minute to go here in the third quarter. Third down and four for the Bucks. And immediate pressure for Pryor. And can he fight for the first down? He did. Looked like they had him stop. Showing that strength in that 6'6", 235-pound frame. He carried defenders forward for a first down. They can let the clock run out here now in the third quarter, Holly. There's been a frantic few minutes over here. The offense for Ohio State's been on the bench for so long that when they went to take the field, Terrell Pryor actually didn't have a helmet. There's been a mad scramble over here as they looked for a replacement for him. He's been wearing the helmet for number 10, and here you see him switching it out right now. He should have his headgear straight now. <laughs> Get your head on right. Takes on a whole new meeting. It does indeed. <laughs> That was a strange quarter. And the lead is 15 for the Buckeyes as we go to the fourth. Ohio State leads by 15. As we go to the fourth quarter, and as a receiver wide open, Dane Sanzenbacher. Nice move to avoid a tackle. And he danced out to the 48-yard line. First down, Javery McFadden made the tackle for Wisconsin. Matt, I want to go back to the decision by Brett Bielema to kick a field goal. As we mentioned, they would have gotten them within 12. And you said on the drive, if you're Wisconsin, you need to get six points. Exactly. I mean, if you kick the field goal, you're still down by two touchdowns. Two so why not go for it and try to score because you're down by two touchdowns without the field goal? They'll blame it on the chart. Brandon Sane. Well, you can't say it's a tired Wisconsin defense. The time of possession is 34 minutes plus for Wisconsin, and that just got Ohio State to 11 minutes plus of time of possession. 31-yard run for the junior Sane. Just a misdirection. They start with the quarterback prior going one way, and then Sane come back the other way, and it's wide open. Great job of tackling, incidentally. Oh 
One minute gone by fourth quarter. They are in field goal range, and that would make it a three-score game. Sane, tackled by Taylor in St. Jean. But Ohio State content now to run the clock. Yeah, just wear it down. I mean, their defense and their special teams hung 21 on them. Now, really, all they have to do right here, like you said, just get the three points and turn it into a three-score game. Say it again, running left. He's to the 13-yard line. Homer St. Jean and Jeff Staley made the tackle. Jim Tressel. His offense in the red zone, he calls the plays. Criticized by some locally for at times unimaginative play calling. I would say this, if you folks, if you don't like the, this coach, go find me a better one. Yeah. Someone with a better track record than this man over his 24 years as a head coach. Youngstown State, 15 years, four national titles. And of course, here at Ohio State, with the presence of the great Woody Hayes always looming over. Six BCS bowl games in eight years. Oh, that's a good play by Schofield. It sure is. <laughs> he took down Pryor. The ball went out of bounds just about at the spot of the tackle. And now a late flag thrown. And we talked so much about this, the speed of Terrell Pryor, but Schofield just walked him down. The runner threw the ball out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. That's intentional grounding at the spot of the foul to be forced out. Lost him down. I don't know if he threw that thing, Sean, as much as when Schofield threw him, it just kind of came flying out. Let's watch. Why'd you see Schofield just running him down? That's a great effort. Uh, maybe we might have. a little flickage. Yeah, there was definitely a wrist flick there. I think it was a good call. I agree with you live. It didn't look like it. Right. But on the replay, it did appear to be grounding. So here's Petri. This is a huge field goal now. It would make it a three-score game. 37-yard try from the right hash mark. And it is good. Almost hit his old pal the upright there, but just did sneak it inside the left one. Coming up. It's the American television craze. Oh, yeah. Another edition of Milling Around in this week's topic, Ohio State's tradition of great All-Americans. <laughs> Back at the Horseshoe in Columbus, and it's time to take a look again at the Pacific Life game summary. The stats are amazing. Ohio State with three non-offensive touchdowns, two interception returns for scores, and they brought a kickoff back for a touchdown. That, and that's the whole game right there. Wisconsin's run 70 plays to 33 for Ohio State. David Gilreath will handle the Petri kickoff, starting from the five. You know, last in the country last year, kickoff returns. They haven't been very good today either. But always good, it seems, Ohio State football, and that's the subject of today's milling around. Well, when you start thinking about Ohio State, there's some things that just pop into your mind. And the first one, of course, is Wayne Woodrow Hayes. I mean, he was... He was a legend, you know, on and off the field. He, as as a young high school kid getting recruited by Woody Hayes, it was it was amazing. I mean, just to have just being the presence, and the guy was more than a football coach. Mm -hmm. And he started a lot of things here at Ohio State, and one of them are those those Buckeyes you see on their helmets, mm -hmm. the stickers, the stickers. Yes. Colzine, plenty of time after the play action fake. He has John Clay out of the backfield. Ross Holman stops him. Seven yard gain. You can see there's there's Coach Hayes right there. But the other thing that's really interesting to me is Ohio State honors all their All Americans with a Buckeye tree and a plaque in an area known as Buckeye Grove outside. And they've been doing that since 1934. They also plant a tree there. And there's all kinds of great ones. I mean, my own personal favorite, John Brock Rockington, was one of my all time favorite Ohio State. Buckeyes, as was Jack Tatum. On target, 
the throw to Nick Toon, and it's a first down. There are the stickers you were talking about. Earlier this year, Matt, Ohio State honored our great pal and ESPN colleague Chris Spielman, two times an All-American here. He's going to get inducted into the National Football Foundation College Hall of Fame in December. As Eddie George, another great star here at Ohio State. And we want to congratulate Chris. He was honored here on the field at halftime of a game earlier this season. Flagged down, probably for holding, as Tolzien runs. And I thought Jim Tressel had the great quote about Chris Spielman. A great Buckeye and a great member of our community. Chris and his wife, Stephanie. Personal foul. Illegal hands to the face. Number 68, offense. That's a 15-yard penalty. Previous thought. First down. Gabe Karimi called for it. I know we all want to send our best wishes Absolutely. along to Stephanie Spielman. Uh, she's been waging a long and very courageous battle with cancer, and the Spielmans have raised a lot of money for cancer research here in Columbus, and uh, our thoughts and prayers are definitely with Stephanie and the Spielmans. You think Chris was a fighter? Stephanie's twice him. Yeah, she's the toughest member of that Spielman family without any question. God bless you, Stephanie. After the penalty, first and 25. Well, Sean, if a, if this Wisconsin team is going to get in now, okay, now now you have to now it's all Tolson. This is going to have to be. Look, if you think your offensive line is that good, and and you you have some big play guys outside, you got to get the ball to Nick Toon. You got to get the ball to Anderson. You have to hang on to it, and you got to throw the football down the field. You're three scores down. You got 10 minutes left. Second and 22. The penalty really hurt. Monty Ball, the running back. Polzine just did get rid of it. And it will be an incomplete pass. Nathan Williams very nearly had a sack. Polzine just did get it off. Once again, here's Matt Weiner in New York. Thank you, Sean. Time for our AT&T All-America Player of the Week update. Tennessee's Jonathan Crompton connected on 20 of his 27 passes for a career-high 310 yards and four scores in the Volunteers' romp over Georgia. To cast your vote, text the word vote to 345-345 from your mobile phone. Well, that's a stunning result. Georgia now 500 for the year. Big win for Tennessee. Holzine on third down and a mile. They have to get to the 44, and that one is almost intercepted by Ross Holman. He's saying he has it, but the officials are not swayed. they will be fourth down, and the Badgers have to punt on fourth and 22. Well, he was getting protected here. Oglesby just, Oglesby's young and needs to get better. Tolzine throwing off the back. Cameron Award right there getting pressure also. Uh, you know, we said on the front end that this Wisconsin offensive line is one of the best we've seen, but Ohio State defense just kicked their rear end today. Ray Small got the Brad Norton punt. And the Badgers get him on the ground near the 35-yard line. Devin Smith, the tackle, 50-yard punt, and a six-yard return. Shawning around and not milling around, whatever I, I would have gone to the Jack <laughs> Nichols Museum. <laughs> as much as I appreciate the great football traditions here, as a person who loves golf, you have to admire the amazing career of Jack Nicholas and Ohio State Buckeye. He got to dot the I in Script Ohio. Everything he's accomplished, he the said he's probably more nervous and excited about that than anything else. 18. Major championships and 108 victories worldwide for Jack Nicholas. This group right here, they played like Jack Nicholas played. That, is, that defensive line today was outstanding. Brandon Sane pulled down by Jay Valai. He's had a quiet day today. He knocked two Buckeyes out last year in the game up in Madison. Well, we talked about Jack Nicholas dotting the eye the first time that. The Ohio State Marching Band performed Script Ohio and dot of the eye was exactly 73 years ago today. 10-10-36. I thought about going down there and dot it. 
<laughs> they didn't ask you. As far as I got. <laughs> you have to be invited. Yeah, security <laughs> grabbed you and turned you back. Exactly. Hey, get the fat guy. <laughs> Darrell Pryor wrapped up by O'Brien Schofield. And the Buckeyes will punt this Thursday at 8, 7 Central. Don't miss an all-new episode of ABC Splash Forward. The entire world saw a vision of the future, and it's changed everything. ABC Splash Forward Thursday night, 8, 7 Central on ABC. They asked him to dot the I first. <laughs> 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 yeah, maybe that's what they were talking about instead of me. <laughs> John Toma short nose up spiral David Gilbert returned it to the 39 the Buckeye started the day number nine of course there's a lot of debate here in the state of Ohio is Cincinnati really better than Ohio State the Bearcats one spot ahead of Ohio State in the AP poll and they have a big game coming up Thursday night at South Florida on ESPN, Florida, the huge test tonight at LSU. Virginia Tech is on a roll. They demolished a good BC team today. They uh, they've been playing very very well, and we had a chance to watch them twice. They got some they have some good defense down there. You think Alabama is the best team you've watched? That's the best this one year. I've watched on tape. You know, lost in all this stuff today is O'Brien, the play of O'Brien Schofield. He has had an outstanding day. There is no foul day. on the play. Timeout. And they're going to need those timeouts. That's certainly not how they wanted to use one. The aerial coverage of today's game is provided by Goodyear. Do Goodyear Fuel Max tires help you get there on less gas? Sean. Right now for Wisconsin, three scores down. They have two timeouts. They just wasted one there. They're going to have to go to hurry up. They're going to have to do something, and they're going to have to push the ball down fast. they got to get a quick score, rely on their dents, and then get it back again. Another future dot the eye guy, the big <laughs> nut. Here's Tolzien. Short throw to Nick Toon. He had a... Use the timeout because Tune on the previous play wasn't really sure where to line up. You might say he was not in tune with the rest of the offense. <laughs> but again, you might not. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all week, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> all right, this is the right thing to do. Go to the hurry up, but they got to, you know, they got to quicken their pace up here. Tolzien down the seam a little bit low. In the direction of Lance Kendricks. Once again, Matt Weiner in New York. All right, John, Michigan freshman Tate Forcier, who has stood tallest as time has grown short for the Wolverines. He'll try to keep his team in it. Fully upset tonight for Rich Rodriguez in Michigan at unbeaten Iowa primetime tonight on ABC. Well, looking forward to watching that one. Iowa, the the only other team that's undefeated in Big Ten Conference play. They're 1-0 in the league. These two teams are both 2-0. Tolzien flattened as he threw it. Got it off to Garrett Graham. He got away from one would-be tackler. And finally, Brian Roll pulled him down. But they're at the 45 of Ohio State with a first down, 7.5 to go. All right, this Josh Oglesby, 67. He has had a rough day today. And he's, he's, he's struggled on that right side. They keep on bringing pressure to that side. But a good job by the Ohio State defenders because they... They keep on blowing up the field. This kid's a big, strong kid. If he wants, he needs to get better. But he, he's he's kind of slow in his movement. He's got to get his hands up quick, and he's got to play with better leverage. Now they're Tolzien helping. Has his man Isaac Anderson hangs on to that one at the 31-yard line. Another first down on a 15-yard pickup for Wisconsin. And they're down by 18. With seven minutes remaining now here in Columbus. Now, when Tolzien has had time, he's been he's been able to find some stuff down the field. What he can't do is he can't telegraph like he did earlier. These two teams have split the last eight meetings, four wins apiece, but Ohio State's on the verge of winning in this rivalry for the third year in a row, unless the Badgers can rally. Nathan Williams had a nice game today. 
pulled down Tolzien near the line. The guy who's had the big game somewhat quietly is Holman, who has 14 tackles, a career high for Ohio State for Ross Holman, the junior linebacker. Yeah, he's, he's had an active day, and that Nathan Williams should turn around and kiss his secondary because that came from coverage. Tolzien is going to run and effectively. And that time he ducks down. He took a couple of shots last week at Minnesota because he didn't slide, and the coaches talked to him about being a little smarter on the run. Yeah. Yeah, he was, uh, he wanted to be He-Man. That doesn't get you very far at this level of play. This is a good job of awareness. Now just tuck it and get down. Get the first down. That, Even that, then, not really not good. in slide mode. Yeah, should probably practice that. OSU took the time out there. Well, that defense has been on the field most of the game, over 28 minutes in possession time for Wisconsin. Tomorrow afternoon on ABC, the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues. It's the Pepsi 500 at California. On his win last week, Tony Stewart reemerged as a championship contender. He's up to fourth place. They're all trying to catch Mark Martin. He's trying to hang in there for all those old folks. This is it, Sean. Mark Martin's day. Been second four times. 50 years old, he's in the lead, he wins it this year. Mm -hmm. I'm trying as hard as I can. A long way to go yet in the chase, but every race <laughs> is so important now. You're right, I, I, I hope he can hang in there. I'm pulling for him. For all of us, well, he's on the other side of 50, the north side. We're, I'm approaching, but you're over 50. <laughs> <laughs> Give me well, you rump. told us you were recruited by Woody Hayes. That kind of was a hint. Oh, and that was an awesome, yes, you were eight when he came awesome to your house. experience. Yeah. John Clay the back. Tolzien toward the end zone, and it is incomplete. Looking for Lance Kendricks, broken up by Kurt Coleman, who's had an impressive day at safety for the Buckeyes today. Now he's pushing it into the end zone, but you're right. Coleman does a nice job in coverage here. He's just sitting back there, and now watch, breaking the ball. Nice. Well done. Kendricks, they've had a tough time holding on to the ball today. Anderson dropped a couple, and that one was a good defensive play there by Coleman. But that's a good football player. Coleman, good in the tackling game and also good in space in the run game and the passing game. Trying to sneak in a run here. And the noise you hear is the clock a ticking. 5.45 and on the move, and we set it down to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, Kurt Coleman of Ohio State back playing this week after sitting out one game last week because of a Big Ten suspension after a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. You know, the university came out, Gene Smith and Jim Tressel came out and said they were disappointed with that ruling, but he's back on the field and says, hey, I'm not going to change the way I play. That's a good player. He should continue to play way plays, Holly. Tolzien, and it is almost intercepted. Oh, man. Torrance had that one. Devin Torrance had inside position. The ball was a little bit underthrown. I thought that could have been a pick. Watch Anderson again. Takes a nice move to the outside. A little bit of, a little bit of help there from the, mm -hmm. from the hand. Fourth down. They're going to go for it. Fourth and five. Needs to be smart. Tolzien, Anderson nearly cost himself the first down when he retreated. Picked it up by about a yard. It'll be first and goal for the Badgers near the H. Mel Hines made the tackle. You're right with Andrew, but that was that was being smart. He knew where the, where, the, where the first down marker was, and he got he almost lost it there. He had a nice catch, and he's coming across. Just I'm got not it. sure he yeah. knew where was, it was. He was retreating as the defenders were getting closer. First and goal. Tolzien buried back of the 17. Nathan Williams again. What a game for the sophomore from Washington Courthouse, Ohio. Well, watch Nathan Williams. If you look at his back pocket, you're going to see a picture of Josh Oglesby because he's owning him today. Right here. He is just he's just up and under the whole time, making a move Ooh. his feet, not doing it. Okay. I mean, you, that, you got to give him help. You got to slide him or put somebody over there. Five tackles for Williams. Tolzien, a spin move, got it off. Kyle Jefferson fighting for every yard. 
Got it back inside the nine. Jamel Hines again in on the play. Well, I guess today is an example that the uh, time of possession battle isn't always that important. How about it? There are over 40 minutes of time of possession, and they're 18 points down right now. And he's getting pressure. He's been getting it from this defensive front all day, and a lot of it's been coming off the, 60, the side of 67. Here, Look out. Here he goes again. Down to the ground. It's Ross Holman playing the best game of his career at Ohio State. Worthington also in there for the Buckeyes. Yeah, this is another that Williamson again. He's just going to come to the inside, and he's going to make the tackle bite down. And then Holman comes off. All you're trying to do is make him move his feet. Watch this. Hard down inside, redirect. Can't get there. Fourth and goal from the 18-yard line. They need to help the right, end, right tackle. And the ball is too high. In the direction of Anderson, Torrance had the coverage. Another 14-play drive for Wisconsin. That results in no points. America has fallen in love with ABC's Modern Family. Well, there's one family member no one expected to see. Shelley Long guest stars in an all-new Modern Family this Wednesday at 9, 8 Central on ABC Comedy Wednesday. I know people are going to think we're just saying it because we're employed by the same network, but that is a very funny show. And I know a lot of friends of mine have become addicted to that show in a very short period of time. F-U-N-N-Y funny. That's funny. some good stuff. Al Bundy in there. Saying the ball carrier, they stack him up. I want to hear more because you talked about it during milling around. I want to hear more about your recruiting visit when you came here to Ohio State and uh, were greeted by the legendary Woody Hayes. Well, yeah, I say it with great respect because, you know, Woody Hayes was Woody Hayes. I mean, he was one of those guys who was just kind of larger than life. And when you went into his office to talk to him, he had a desk that sat up kind of high, and he put you in a chair where you sat, and you kind of just like sunk down, and you kind of looked up at him. <laughs> and then he just, then he decided to talk to you about academics, and 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 it was sincere, and he wanted to talk to you about getting a good education, and all that stuff. And he was a great historian, but all you wanted, you're looking at the, his office. Number 75, down a three-point stance, and then came up. Five-yard penalty. It's a five-yarder. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, you know, you're looking around his office, and there's Hopalong Cassidy, and there's all the Heisman winners, and, you know, it's Woody Hayes. And you just, all you want to talk about is football. You don't really want to talk about a history class, or it might be a business major. You just want to get right to the football, and that was the one thing he wouldn't talk about. Really? Yes. So you were recruited by Woody Hayes and Joe Paterno. And both Sam Beckler and a whole host of them. And it was, at that time, you didn't have uh, a limit on on uh, recruiting trips. Mm -hmm. Now they've limited them. At that time, you could you could see the country. And Crowd I did. booze because Wisconsin's battling all the way to the end here and using a timeout. Yeah, Jim Tressel told us now the limit is five. You can take five trips. And a lot of the youngsters these days don't even use all the trips because recruiting now starts earlier and earlier. Completely with the exposure of these programs on TV. Right. So many of these recruits have an idea of what the programs are like, what the stadium looks like, what the history and traditions are, so they make the decisions without uh, always taking all their trips. One of the hardest things that I had to do in all of recruiting was when I was decided to go to Penn State and I had to tell Woody Hayes that I wasn't going to go there. That was tough. That was a... Excuse me, Mr. Hayes. I mean, it was one of those things you didn't really want to say, it, but it had to spit it out. One of the most fascinating characters in the long history of college football, Woody Hayes, and there's a great man to be leading this program. Jim Tressel, the son of Ohio. Brandon Sane carries for Ohio State, just trying to run out the clock now. 31-13, the lead, and 2:20 to go. What do you think about Jim Tressel? Born and raised in this state, played for legendary coach himself, his dad, Lee Tressel, the late Lee Tressel, a legendary figure at Baldwin Wallace College, where he won a national championship. Jim had great success at Youngstown State, was an assistant here at Ohio State prior to that. 
And now here at Ohio State, I just think embodies all of the things that yeah. a coach of college football should stand for. One thing I know about Jim Tressel, and you can see right there for the three of them, they yeah, got their Dick. 500 wins. Brother they Dick gave... also was the head coach in 100 games. Right. The Tressels now have over 500 wins combined, only the Bowdens of more. He, right there, he tries to do it the right way. That's a character guy. I met him 10 years ago, and uh, he's not he's not moved one iota off of what he believes in, and he never will. And I think that's one of the marks of a great program. I think that's one of the marks of a great coach. And he is a great coach. Holly? Well, guys, one of the really neat things that Jim Tressel has done, he started it back in 1986 when he was at Youngstown State as a head coach, is he hands out what's called the winner's manual. It started out about 75 pages. It has stuff like the Pledge of Allegiance, the Gettysburg Address, and he's written it to a book now that everybody can read, not just the Ohio State players. And I'm telling you, this is a really cool book, guys. I've read it. And I, I actually asked to see the winner's manual whenever I can. Mark D'Antonio has one, one of his former assistants at Michigan State. And it has stuff in here that just tells you about how to live life. And if you really want a glimpse into what has made Jim Tressel so successful, it is in this winner's manual. Don Toma punts. I never had the chance to meet Lee Tressel, but those who knew the legendary late coach Lee Tressel say he was a not only a great coach, but a phenomenal guy. We asked Jim yesterday, what he learned most from being around his dad. He said, well, I grew up around it. Our house was right next to the stadium. Exactly. The players were over all the time. And most of all, I learned how important it was to treat your players well and to take an interest in them. And he is concerned about every aspect of their life, their involvement in the community, their academics, the football. It's all a part of that winner's manual. It's all a complete package as far as he's concerned here. You know, it's, it's interesting because Jim Tressel's uh, theories and philosophies really sound a lot like Coach Hayes because right, he ended man. up saying it's all about people. Mm -hmm. And inevitably, in all this stuff, it's a, it's a people game, but it's all about relationships, and they understand that. Of course, Woody was controversial and had some unfortunate moments as well. I don't think anybody to worry about Number Jim. 74, offense. That's a 10-year penalty. Previous spot will repeat. First down. Losing control of himself. And here's their remaining schedule. They're at Purdue. They'll be going for a 17th conference road win. And that would match the all-time Big Ten road winning streak if they could do it. Michigan years ago won 17 straight road games. But the tough part of it's at the end. Penn State, Iowa, and the battle at Michigan. Dressel 7-1 against the Wolverines. Tolzine sacked by Lawrence Wilson. He's a study in perseverance. Has missed almost all the last two years with a couple of different leg injuries. And he's back here battling as a senior. Well, they started off the game, did this Ohio State team with sacking the quarterback on the very first play, and they've been relentless the whole day long. And Wisconsin have allowed only two sacks in the first five games. The Buckeyes have gotten a toll zine six times. Incomplete pass looking for Monty Ball. So at the start, we said this was a good offensive line for the Wisconsin Badgers. And again, I saw it was the best offensive line that I watched really on tape. But today, I mean, it was personal by what Ohio State did. And they took him to him physically. They beat him individually. They beat the scheme. They beat protections. And they got after him all game long. And yet, if you're Wisconsin, he had 356 yards of offense, passed for 237, yet over 42 minutes time of possession. So the offense has done a lot of things well today, but the two turnovers that get returned for scores and the kickoff return for the score for Ohio State. The difference in the game, Monty Ball the catch, Kurt Coleman the tackle, and we were nearing a half minute left. And you know, the other thing, uh, Sean, was they had opportunities. They, the two big drops by Anderson early, and that, that those were big plays. One could have, should have been six in the end zone. It ended up being nothing. So Wisconsin will suffer its first loss of the year, fall to 5-1 and one overall, 2-1 and one in conference play. And now there are only two undefeated teams left in the Big Ten Conference. Ohio State at 3-0, and, and Iowa will try to stay perfect both in conference and overall when they host Michigan tonight on ABC. 
That Iowa team's a good team. They play good defense. They're very well coached. Kirk Ferentz is an outstanding coach. And any game you go into with Iowa, you're going to have to play good fundamentals because that's the game he's going to win. Hard to believe with the success that Iowa's had under Ferentz. They've only been 2-0 and in the Big Ten once under Ferentz. So that was amazing. in 2002 when they went 8-0 and went to the Orange Bowl. After the defense took it over on downs, Pryor took an E. And Ohio State is victorious, despite the fact the Buckeyes had just 185 yards of total offense. And they ran just 39 plays to 89 for Wisconsin unofficially. Those are the numbers on the unofficial stat monitor right now. No matter how you slice it, they were lopsided. But Ohio State has the win, 31-13 the final. A complete wrap-up of this game on ESPN News in just a few minutes. Now for Matt Millen, Holly Rowe, and our great crew, Sean McDonough saying so long from Columbus. We'll check in with John and Jesse after these words from our ABC stations.